Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia, and welcome back to the first Emperor of Wei Let's Talk More series, as we continue with episode 7, titled Self-Sabotage. Now, at the end of our last episode, we briefly talked about Dian Lun, which was a collection of 22 short papers written by Cao Pi. Originally meant for his sons, it covered a wide variety of topics with papers titled Warnings Against Flattery, Self-Constraints, Regrets About Alcohol, Autobiography, and Criticism of Literature. Of the 22 chapters, only three survived in some capacity, as the full collection was eventually lost to time by the Song Dynasty. Luckily, Autobiography survived to give us a better understanding of Cao Pi's childhood, but more importantly, criticism on literature also survived in its entirety as it is now widely considered as one of the earliest literary criticism pieces in Chinese literature. In it, Cao Pi covered original ideas such as how scholars have been historically arrogant as they innately look down on other scholars, as each firmly believed they were the best. He then goes on to objectively compare the strength and weaknesses of the famed Seven Sons of Jian'an, who are seen as the best scholars of the time period, before praising scholars in general as an essential part of any government, as literature can be seen as this invisible force that do not bend to brute strength even in times of chaos. Lastly, in the paper, Cao Pi challenges the traditional wisdom that what is old must be more valuable than what is new as famous works of the past are often overrated compared to contemporary works that can be better in reality, even if they're less famous. Now, once Cao Pi had written this particular paper, he gathered up all the respected scholars in Ye to analyze, debate, edit, and criticize the paper. And once that was finished, he mailed one copy to Sun Quan, not for Sun Quan to read himself, but for Zhang Zhao, who was widely respected across China at the time, to give his take on the work. And once the final edits of the work were done, the entirety of Dian Lun were carved onto six giant stone tablets and placed outside of the imperial school in the capital, as this became the defining literary work of Cao Pi, during the period when he was actively fighting for the heir position with Cao Zhi. Now, despite its success, none of this really helped push Cao Pi over Cao Zhi, as Cao Zhi was still Cao Cao's favorite son, as there were many times that Cao Cao came super close to officially naming Cao Zhi as heir, only for him to reconsider, mainly because Cao Zhi kept self-sabotaging himself simply because he could not hold his cup. And the most critical self-sabotage moment came in 217, when Cao Cao had just doubled the number of households given to Cao Zhi from his marquee's title from 5,000 to 10,000, which simply meant that Cao Zhi would be receiving double the tax income from this marquee's region, as he's now entitled to 10,000 household worth of tax income. And to celebrate this, Cao Zhi, in his typical fashion, hosted a feast with his supporters and scholars where he once again had too many drinks. And to make matters worse, in his drunken state, Cao Zhi stormed into the imperial stable where the emperor's carriage and horses were being kept. And taking the reign of the emperor's carriage, Cao Zhi sped around the imperial palace for a joyride, perhaps believing that his title promotion signaled that he would become heir, and thus eventually the emperor. Obviously, this reckless move broke all customs and rules of the court, as the imperial court pressured Cao Cao to do something. In the end, Cao Cao ordered the head of the imperial stable to be executed, as he became the fall guy for Cao Zhi's drunken behavior, but deep down inside, Cao Zhi had officially lost his right to become heir, as later in the same year, Cao Cao would officially name Cao Pi 
as the heir to the position of Duke of Wei, which was Cao Cao's title at the time. And this news completely devastated Cao Zhi as he turned to the bottle more and more in the following years, leading to his most famous drunken incident in 219. At the time, his uncle, Cao Ren, was under siege in Fan Castle, as Guan Yu had attacked the Jin province. Desperate for reinforcements, Cao Cao was pulling units from all across the country, including seven reserve armies in the north. And at this time, Cao Cao knew Cao Zhi had been rather depressed since losing the position of heir, so wanting to pick his son up from depression by giving him a new purpose in life, Cao Cao gave the commanding position of this northern army to Cao Zhi as he was given new titles such as the Lieutenant of the South Central Army and the General who campaigns against the bandits. Yet when the command arrived in the city of Ye, Cao Zhi was blackout drunk. And with the army ready to leave the next day, Yu Jin would be forced into action as he would end up leading this fateful reinforcement group that would eventually surrender to Guan Yu after being drenched by a flood, which you can hear all about in our Guan Yu's Last Dance Let's Talk Lore series. More importantly to our story here, this event became the last straw between Cao Cao and Cao Zhi, as Cao Cao vowed to never use Cao Zhi after this drunken incident, which eliminated any potential last-minute change of heart on the matter of air in the final year of Cao Cao's life as in January of 220, Cao Cao would pass away due to illness at the age of 66 in the city of Luoyang. Now, before we move on to cover Cao Pi's ascension to the position of Duke of Wei and the following forced abdication of the Han in October of the same year, we need to discuss why Cao Cao never forced the abdication to make himself emperor before his death as Cao Cao's illness was not a sudden disease as he had been suffering from effects of what is now widely believed to be a brain tumor for years. And while he never got the official reunification moment, Guan Yu's campaign in 219 did create a momentary diplomatic vassalage of Sun Quan, as Sun Quan would make himself a vassal of Cao Cao before backstabbing Guan Yu. In response, Cao Cao awarded the title of General of Cavalry to Sun Quan, and when the tribute envoy from Sun Quan would meet Cao Cao to accept this title on behalf of Sun Quan, they presented Cao Cao a letter from Sun Quan himself where he suggested that Cao Cao should abolish the Han and become the first emperor of a new Wei dynasty. And laughing at this letter, Cao Cao showed its content to his court as he claimed that Sun Quan was trying to push him into the fire. But his court soon joined in as well as everyone who worked for and fought for Cao Cao for the majority of their lives also wanted to see him ascend to the throne. Yet Cao Cao would wave them off, as he stated that if fate would favor him, then he would become like Emperor Wen of Zhou. And for those who are unfamiliar with the beginnings of the Zhou dynasty, which lasted 800 years and predated Qin, the first official emperor of Zhou is Emperor Wu, who was the son of Emperor Wen, who Cao Cao is referring to, as Emperor Wu would be the one to officially defeat the previous Shang dynasty, even though most of the setup work were done by his father. So after becoming emperor, he posthumously named his father as Emperor Wen. So in a sense, Cao Cao felt that his work as the setup man was complete and that his son, in this case Cao Pi, would complete his life work by displacing the Han and creating a new dynasty in Wei. Then surely he would get his posthumous honors. And sure enough, once Cao Pi usurped the Han, Cao Cao would get his posthumous titles. But since Cao Cao did most of the fighting, he would actually get the title of Emperor Wu of Wei as Wu means marshal, while Cao Pi would take the title Emperor Wen of Wei, as Wen means civil, as Cao Pi is going to be more focused on the administrative side of transforming the bureaucracy of his new dynasty. So with this, we're going to end our episode here, and next time in our final episode, 
will cover some of the obstacles faced by Cao Pi on his path to usurp the Han. As while Cao Cao completed much of the setup work, there were still many Han loyalists remaining in court and jealous siblings for Cao Pi to worry about. So hopefully you all enjoyed this episode enough to drop a like to support the channel, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!